part 29 of WCF video series. In this video, we'll discuss hosting WCF service in IIS. This is continuation to part 28, so please watch part 28 before proceeding. First, let's look at an example of hosting the WCF service in IIS and then we'll discuss the concepts on the slide. Let's flip to Visual Studio. So this is the same project that we worked with in the previous session. We want to host this Hello service in IIS. And in order to do that, the first step is to add a website to this solution. So right click on the solution, add new website. Make sure you have Visual C Sharp selected under install templates, select WCF service. And we want to create this website in the same Hello service solution folder and this hello service solution folder is present in C drive so let's browse to C drive so within C drive we want to create this website in hello service solution folder open that and let's name the project itself hello service IIS host click OK that should create the project for us and if you notice this app underscore code folder, notice that we have ieservice.cs and service.cs files. Basically, these files are there to specify our service code. But if you recollect from the previous session, we already have you know, our WCF service in a separate project that is Hello Service Project. And this is what we want to host using this website. So we can get rid of these two files. Since we want to host Hello Service using this website, we first need to add a reference to Hello Service project. So right click on the project itself, add reference, and make sure you have Hello Service project selected. And that should add a reference to our Hello Service. Okay, and the next important thing is this .svc file. So this is what the IIS will use to locate the service. Okay, let's give this file a meaningful name. Let's call this hello service.svc. Open this file and we can get rid of this code behind attribute because we no longer have our service code in app underscore code folder. So let's get rid of this code behind attribute. And you know, against the service attribute, we need to specify the fully qualified name of our WCF service. If you look at our WCF service, the name of the service is Hello Service and it is present in Hello Service namespace. So let's go ahead and specify that fully qualified name here. So Hello Service dot Hello Service. All right, so that's the change that we have to do to the .svc file. The next important thing is the configuration for the WCF service itself, which we specify in web.config file. Let's get rid of this, uh, you know, auto-generated config for us. So let's delete that from web.config file. Let's actually copy the configuration you know, from this app.config file within the host project. And if you remember, this host project is nothing but a console application, which we have used in the previous sessions to host this WCF service. So let's copy this configuration from that app.config file and paste it within our web.config file. And we need to modify this configuration. Now, first of all, we don't require this base address here because IIS supports only HTTP protocol related bindings. So net TCP binding is not supported within IIS. You know, when we use IIS where Windows activation services is enabled, then it's going to support all the protocols, all the transport protocols and bindings. But, but if we host it in IIS where we don't have Windows activation services, then only HTTP protocol will be available. So only HTTP protocol related bindings are supported. So the binding has to be something to do with HTTP protocol. So basic HTTP binding. All right. So that's all, you know, the change that we have to do for the configuration. All right. The next step is to create a, a virtual directory within IIS for this website. So we need to open um, IIS and in order to do that click on the start button type run and press enter that should open the run window within the run window type inet mgr 
and that's going to open IIS for us. Expand the default root node, expand sites, and you know, right click on default website and select this option add application. So give an alias to the um, virtual directory, let's call this hello service. And you know, give an application pool, let's actually use ASP.NET version 4.0 and physical path. Where are the code files present? They are present in our C drive in hello service. That's the solution folder. Within that we have hello service IIS host. That's what we need to select. Click OK and finally click OK. So that has created you know this hello service virtual directory for us. Now if right click on that and select this option switch to content view. Alright so here we have our hello service.svc file. So let's go ahead quickly build our solution to make sure everything still compiles. Notice the status bar. So build succeeded. Now let's actually go and browse this hello service.svc file. So look at the URL localhost hello service forward slash hello service dot svc localhost that's the name of the computer and hello service is our virtual directory and hello service dot svc is the file within that virtual directory. Okay, so once we click on this link here, we will be redirected to the Vistal document. All right, so now let's go ahead and test this. WCF service using a client application. So here we have this Windows client. Let's get rid of the service reference from here. Delete the service references folder as well. And let's add a service reference. And here let's give the address of our Vistal document. And click go. So this should locate our hello service. So let's give the namespace as hello service. Click OK. And now if you look at the app.config file of this client application, it should be using basic HTTP binding. That's what we have defined at the service level. So let's go ahead and run this Windows client application test our service. Get message, it should come back with hello test. Look at that, it works as expected. So very simple to host a WCF service in IIS. So to host a WCF service in IIS, the most important thing is this file with .svc extension. This file contains service host directive. So if you look at the hello service.svc file, it has got the service host directive and look at the service attribute. So the service attribute of service host directive specifies which service this file points to. The service code itself can either reside in the .svc file, so we can write the service code here itself if we want to. Otherwise, the service code can be present in a separate assembly. In our case, the service code is actually present in this hello service project and we have added a reference to that project so that the service code is present in this DLL. So the service code can either be present in the .svc file or in a separate assembly or in a file in app underscore code folder. And if you recollect when we created this website, you know, underneath app underscore code folder, we had iService.cs and service.cs files. So the service code can either be present there as well. The configuration for the WCF service goes in the web.config file. We have seen that. And the service host directive in .svc file, that is what is responsible for creating an instance of service host when required. There is no need for us to write code to instantiate and start service host as we did with self-hosting. So if you recollect from the previous session, 
So we have self-hosted the WCF service using a console application. And if you look at the code here, look at that. We are creating an instance of service host programmatically and we are invoking this open method to open the communication channels. And we did the same thing with Windows host as well as Windows service host. We had to really write some code, you know, to create an instance of service host and open the communication channels. With IIS, we don't have to write any code for that. The service host uh, directive in that .svc file is responsible for creating an instance of service host when we require it. In our next video, we will discuss the advantages and disadvantages of hosting WCF service in IIS. That's it for today. Thank you for listening. Have a great day.